So have you ever been writing the next big fantasy novel and found that your spelling is way off or a lot of the letters seem to appear twice? Well sometimes that's because the keyboard's broken and in my case it was the S, E, I and backspace key that were being effectively activated twice every time I pushed it. And so this video is going to be about how I took the keyboard apart and replaced those keys and put it all back together again. Here I've got the keycap remover key thingy and I'm just removing the keys that I know are faulty and I'm taking them off so that I can put a little mark on the switches so I know later which switches I actually need to remove because they all look the same once you've taken all the keys off. I probably should have looked when wanting to unscrew the back of the keyboard of how many screws there are and where they are but I didn't and there's a surprising amount under the rubber pads and behind the Logitech label thing. I suspect this is because they want to check to see if you've voided your warranty or not. Uh, this keyboard's out of warranty, so I don't actually care. It may be worth trying a heat gun to remove the label if you were trying to fix it without sending it back. The next stage of this, now that you've got all the screws out, is to try and pop all the little clips that you can't see inside the keyboard to remove the back. And I use the little electronic screwdrivers for this, but some form of pick or something a bit plasticky would have probably made it a lot less uh, tense without having to mar the plastic. Uh, once you get it off you then need to look at unscrewing the circuit board and that has its own little array of screws in it as well. Some of them have got machine thread and some of them are just screwed into the plastic backing so it is worth making a note of which screws go where so that when you come to put it back together later you don't have to randomly put screws in and see which ones fit. As with the bottom casing, the top casing has a load of these little invisible clips that help hold it onto the circuit board and you just have to kind of gently flex the top until you find them all and you can unclip them. Next I removed all the keycaps. Uh, you could probably do this at any point but this is the part of the process where I did it and just put them all in a box so that I could take them and give them a quick rinse with some soapy water and get all the dust and hair and all the other things that keyboards collect off it. Each of the switches has two pins on it that I needed to desolder to get the switch off and so I just put a little sharpie mark in between the two pins that I needed to desolder. So to desolder the pins I used some desoldering wick uh, which when you make it hot over the solder it sucks up all the solder in the joint uh, but I also used a little bit of flux on the joints before putting the wick on just to help that solder flow up into the wick made it a lot easier so when doing this I had the soldering iron set to about 380 I don't actually know if this is right or not but it seemed to work I simply put the solder wick over the joint and then held it down with the soldering iron until the soldering wick seemed to have a lot of solder in it and then pulled it away and that seemed to leave the connection point with a little hole around the pin. The switches have little clips either side of them, so when you try and get them out you have to squeeze them both in to get the switch to pop out. And once I got those four switches out, I got the replacement switches, just popped them straight back in, and then turned the keyboard over and got ready to do more soldering. So having made sure that the switches were fully seated into the circuit board, I just used a standard flux cord solder and the soldering iron at 380 degrees again and just put the soldering iron on the pin and then introduced a couple of little jobs of solder until it formed a nice little dome over the, over the connectors. So the flux I used is a little brown and gunky as you may be able to tell. And so after I finished in the soldering, I got a tissue with some isopropanol alcohol stuff on it and just gave it a little wipe just to clean off the, any of the excess flux that may cause issues to the soldered joint. Okay, so now the switches have been soldered in and all cleaned up, it's time to put the keyboard back together and we start with the top and you need to make sure that any of the little slide switches on the top line up with the slide switches on the circuit board so that they work after you put it back together again. This piece simply clips on and you just have to line it up with all the buttons and just push and it should, you just should hear like a load of little clicks all over the keyboard as, it, as the top engages with the circuit board. The next step is where you'll be glad if you took notes earlier and to where which type of screw goes where and you're going to screw the circuit board to the 
top faceplate of the keyboard and making sure that you got the machine screws and the like plastic screws all in the right locations to hold it down. Once that's all secured, the next step is to put the back of the keyboard on and screw it down with all its appropriate screws in the right places. Uh, when you put the back on, you need to make sure that all the little clips around the outside fully engage as well. So it's worth putting it on and then squeezing the edges, making sure all the little clips click. Before screwing the back fully down, I made sure that the keyboard actually worked. So I put the battery back in and checked that it typed and all that a lot. I won't know that it's not double tapping until it gets a bit more of a proper test. But for now, I'm happy that the keys are at least working. So the last little thing to sort out on the keyboard before it's finished is all the rubber pads that were stuck on with double-sided sticky tape are no longer sticky. So I had to cut some more double-sided tape and reapply that just so that the rubber would stick into their little grooves again. All the keycaps have been off and had a good soak and so are nice and clean again, which is really nice. And so I'm going to do a quick time-lapse of me put them all back on because I'm sure you don't want to watch me put 104 keys on in real time. If you want any more detail for this video then please head over to my Twitch channel which is linked below and there's a full length of me streaming the whole repair over there but this is a lot shorter video. I think it took around two hours to, to do the whole thing. One last thing with it is to just give everything a quick wipe down. And it's never going to be perfect because it's a reasonably well used keyboard but at least give it a quick quick rub down and it will just kind of finish the whole project off. If you like this video and found it useful, more importantly, um, please like and subscribe. I try and put up lots of different sort of content, but all around the making theme. And if you want to see me make the soldering station that I used for this video, then it'll be in a box somewhere for you to click on. And I hope to see you again soon.